Hi, welcome to your astrology forecast for April 2nd to April 8th, 2015. On April 2nd, Mercury in Aries trines Saturn in Sagittarius in the early morning hours right after midnight. So there may have been a bit of a serious tone earlier, uh, early on in the day, and your thoughts might have been focused around your responsibilities, and you might have even uh, felt a little bit more somber and uh, felt kind of a weight of responsibility around things that you needed to get done, maybe things that uh, you needed to communicate or uh, things that you had to write or take care of in terms of things you had to do around your neighborhood or possibly just um, around... Uh, you know, just thinking about all your responsibilities. So that kind of tone occurred earlier. And then the sun in Aries trines Jupiter and Leo. And so that's going to actually help you feel a lot more optimistic and ready to expand upon some of those ideas and not feel so bogged down by them anymore. And you'll have a lot more energy to learn new things and explore and expand and find out more about other cultures and stuff like that. And maybe even go on an adventure and uh, expend some extra energy uh, hiking or doing something more adventurous and fun. And then on April 3rd, the moon moves into Libra. So this helps us to nurture our relationships and really be able to understand emotionally what's going on with the people in our lives a lot easier and be more empathetic and there to listen to other people as well as discuss your own emotions in a relationship setting or a one-on-one -on -one situation. And then the moon in Libra sextiles Saturn in Sagittarius and they both in conjunct Mars and Taurus creating a yod. So there is going to be some sense of responsibility in your relationships that might come up or even in um, your learning or uh, even your career potentially. And then with them in conjunct Mars and Taurus, this is actually telling us to act on some of the plans that we've been making and some of the uh, ideas we've been having about our responsibilities so that we don't feel so heavy and we can take care of these things in a very methodical kind of way, very systematic kind of way, and really be able to uh, utilize our energies in a very effective kind of way, but in a not in an impulsive really way, but more of a slow and steady approach and be able to conserve that energy in a very um, kind of uh, rhythmic sort of fashion, like, you know, yeah, that sort of thing. And then the moon conjuncts the North Node in Libra. This helps us to uh, take note of where we're going. What, where are we heading towards? What is our evolutionary next steps? And what sort of relationships do we want to have? And what we're going to be kind of reflecting on our relationships and where our relationships are heading and what kind of um, feelings we want to have in our relationships. So we can improve upon them by reflecting on them at this time. And then on April 4th, the moon in Libra conjuncts the north node, uh, that's conjuncting the north node, opposes the sun in Aries, which is conjunct the south node, as well as Uranus and Mercury. And this is a full moon lunar eclipse. And on top of that, they're all squaring Pluto and Capricorn, uh, really bringing about that Uranus-Pluto square once more. And it creates a T-square. <laughs> So, I mean, this is kind of insane. So um, the moon in Libra conjunct the North Node, I kind of talked about how it's going to bring up our relationships and where we want to head in our relationships. The sun in Aries conjuncts the South Node. So this is actually helping us to release old ways of being in the world. And Uranus and Mercury there actually is giving us really great insights into ourselves. And it actually might be shocking sometimes and somewhat just like uncomfortable. There's a lot of uncomfortable stuff coming up for us. A lot of parts of ourselves that we maybe haven't acknowledged or parts of ourselves that we've been ignoring or even just a sense of, um, you know, wanting to run away from ourselves because 
with the south node, it's going to be bringing up the parts that we don't like sometimes and the parts that we need to either transform or integrate more into our lives or uh, even let go of altogether. So then Pluto and Capricorn, Pluto and Capricorn is bringing up all the stuff that needs to change within our careers and bringing up a lot of tensions around that stuff and a lot of unconscious stuff within ourselves, even around authority figures and even uh, maybe even our father issues and, uh, you know, anything like that. And that's bringing up all kinds of tensions. So there's really a need to go within ourselves at this time so that we kind of can get more centered within ourselves and not allow all these intense forces to really uh, confuse us too much or like take us out of, uh, take us out really. So also the shadow parts of who we are and the shadow parts of our relationships may come up and we will have to deal with those things and really look at those things and be able to change something about them. Maybe let go of certain habits that we have, certain tendencies that we have in our relationships that are no longer serving us, no longer healthy, so that we can have healthier and more evolved relationships. So letting go of selfish tendencies, letting go of uh, over-dependency even. So it's really about finding a balance between, uh, between being independent and being um, mindful of other people. So there's kind of this uh, tension coming up and then the Pluto is of course stirring up all the unconscious stuff, but also other stuff uh, that is less concerning with relationships, but it could also be influencing our relationships as well since it's interacting with those planets. But yeah, Uranus is also shaking things up really intensely. You may gain really um, intense insights that you might um, you know, it's kind of like Pandora's box. Once you know it, it's like, well, what are you going to do about it now? You know, <laughs> what it, there's you can't put it back in the box. You got to deal with it now, you know. So some major changes could occur. And so just be aware of that. <laughs> and then Mercury conjuncts the south node in Aries, helping us to communicate all those things that we've realized and all those things that we've been dealing with all the uh, things we need to let go of. So major conversations could occur around how we're feeling uh, and also about ourselves, communicating the parts of ourselves that we haven't always been as proud of or have even rejected to a degree. And then Venus and Taurus sextiles Chiron and Pisces, and they both then conjunct the moon and Libra, creating a yod. So this is definitely bringing up old wounds in relationships and even uh, in how you feel about yourself, possibly. And the only way of dealing with this is actually by becoming aware of those things and by um, sharing those things with a, another person, um, whether it is a relationship or maybe um, just a really close friend that you have. And then that actually will help you to gain better balance in your relationships. Maybe there, you know, even is like an imbalance at this time um, that you need to confront. And then uh, hopefully you'll be able to get back in balance. And that'll help to feel, you'll feel more nurtured in your relationships and that will help you nurture your relationships better. So then on April 5th, the sun in Aries squares Pluto and Capricorn exactly. So this is uh, bringing up the areas where we really want to be ourselves within our careers, but it may not always be as appropriate in your certain career. So there, there may be tensions that get brought up there or tensions with an authority figure where there's unconscious issues, personality conflicts could come up. But it's also important for you to uh, maintain integrity to yourself within that. So, um, you know, don't bend over backwards just because, you know, an authority figure expects you to. Uh, be true to yourself within also being mindful that, you know, there's a time and a place 
for certain behaviors, I guess. <laughs> and then the moon moves into Scorpio on that day, on April 5th. So this is going to be bringing up some deep unconscious emotions and we'll be able to really understand what's going on with ourselves at a deeper level subconsciously and even with other people on that subconscious level. You may get triggered by others on this day uh, because it's kind of a button pushing day so that you become aware of those things that do push your buttons. So becoming aware of those subconscious issues, subconscious fears, and even subconscious desires can help you to, um, well, transform them and also be able to maybe do something about them as well. And then April 6th, Mercury in Aries trines Jupiter in Leo. So this is great for learning and learning about yourself even, learning about yourself through your children potentially or through adventures. And um, you'll be able to communicate in a much more expanded and philosophical kind of way. Very um, philosophical and creative conversations could occur and conversations that might help you become more aware of yourself. And also you could learn new things potentially even go on a trip. Um, well, Jupiter is still retrograde, but it is going to go direct on the 8th. So I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so yeah, I mean, you might be planning for a trip in the near future. And then the Sun in Aries conjuncts Uranus. So the Sun in Aries conjuncting Uranus helps you to gain greater awareness about yourself, ultimately. And you'll be able to be more yourself ar around people. And maybe even you might come across as a little bit more eccentric than usual, a little bit more unusual than usual. <laughs> and uh, But ultimately, you're going to be um, really coming into yourself more, becoming more yourself. More awareness about yourself will come forward, more of your higher self will come forward, and you can have some really revolutionary changes about your personality and revolutionary changes that can bring about some major, um, you know, actions, like you could take some major actions that bring major changes to your life during this time. And then April 7th, Mercury and Aries squares Pluto and Capricorn. So this will help us to communicate about things that are very deep, but you might end up saying something that creates a problem potentially with an authority figure, but in general, it uh, could bring up some underlying issues in any situation. Uh, so you have to be careful about how you communicate these things because Aries does have that tendency to come across as a little bit confrontational or blunt. So that could create those tensions, but you could also get to the bottom of an issue and come up with creative solutions to very intense uh, underlying issues within yourself or within another um, and within a career situation too. So it may be kind of intense on that day, but at the same time, there is a way, like if you come up with a creative solution and kind of have that mindset that you can get through it and that should help you to transform whatever uh, issues crop up for you on that day. And then the moon moves into Sagittarius and this helps you to feel a lot better, a lot more expanded and able to learn and open to learning and philosophical and adventurous and uh, excited too. Maybe there's, you know, trips being planned and you're getting excited about the trips and something to look forward to. Um, you may be looking forward to other things. More optimism could be felt. And then April 8th, Mercury conjuncts Uranus and Aries. Now this is just insane, like for uh, really large worldview insights. A lot of objectivity could be had in your conversations. You may be a bit more t detached in conversations and uh, be able to gain really amazing insights through conversations. So writing down some of these ideas is a really good idea. And being very self-aware on this day, maybe even tuning into your higher self on purpose on this day would be a good idea. And you could get 
some action steps that come to you uh, through doing that, that can be very revolutionary for your life and for who you are and for your mental faculties even. And then the moon conjuncts Saturn and Sagittarius. So this is going to bring a little bit of a sense of responsibility on this day. You might have to take care of some stuff and you may be even confronting some beliefs. And um, I've noticed that with Saturn being retrograde, it's been a time where you've had to confront parts of yourself that have potentially uh, where you've been overly optimistic or even to the point of uh, hypocritical. So it's not an easy time during Saturn retrograde at all. <laughs> so you're going to be confronting certain responsibilities too, like uh, that you haven't been dealing with, but you'll be able to come up with more efficient ways of doing them. And that actually has manifested for me personally. So, <laughs> but it, it definitely has been bringing up a lot of places where you might feel insecure or uh, not quite as, you know, up to par as you want to be. And Saturn is just really trying to get you to uh, figure out a way to get to the point where you want to be uh, in terms of efficiency and maturity and being a responsible and mature adult or, you know, mature person. And that's just been a theme that I've noticed <laughs> personally as well. All right, Jupiter goes direct in Leo on this day as well. Um, so this is, oh my gosh, this is so muchly needed <laughs> during this Saturn retrograde. So there's going to be an emphasis on um, creativity, expansion, learning, children, and travel, and then also romance and fun. And you may be a bit more exaggerative during these times, exaggerating uh, your finer qualities or whatever. You may be overly optimistic at this time and maybe even, you know, there could be a little bit of acts of hubris going on around in the world <laughs> where people, you know, are overly optimistic to the point where they are, you know, yeah, just uh, pompous even. So... That could happen, but it also is great for feeling a bit better about the future and more optimistic, so that's good, and you'll be able to uh, expand through creativity easier and learning new things as well, which I already mentioned, I know. All right, <laughs> and then the moon in Sagittarius creates a grand shrine with Jupiter and Leo and Uranus and Aries. Oh my goodness, I mean, this is so insightful. You can learn so much at this time, especially by going within yourself as well as uh, looking to other cultures. Other cultures may give you a sense of culture shock, but it's also going to be super insightful. Uh, and going on a trip uh, very soon is very likely with a lot of people. Um, and also, I mean, just learning in general. I mean, you will definitely feel more inclined to uh, learn new things at this time and have more adventures and really expand those horizons and uh, even potentially uh, connect with people from overseas as well. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And I will talk to you very soon. Actually, um, not that soon, because I am going to take a week off because I'm going to be going somewhere and I, yeah, actually I'm going on a trip. Hey, that's funny. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have an awesome week.